Okay, so for this one, we'll do another um, cabinet oblique. So that means we're going to go back half depth. And this time we'll use a 45 degree angle again as well, just to kind of see how that can make a little bit of a difference. And since this also has a circle involved in it, or at least curves on that front face, you'll need your compass for it as well. So please make sure you get those tools out. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's tape our page down nice and straight. Let me just make sure that it's not being covered too much by the picture, but I don't want to make the picture too small that it's hard to see. So I just line my page up with the edge of the T-square, and I'm actually going to, just because I had a little bump in my paper, so I just adjusted it and just rechecked my T-square. And then we'll lay out our border, which again is quarter of an inch on each side, half inch up for that title block, quarter inch on each side. And then to lay out our title block, we're just going to measure four, three, two, one and a half. So even though this shape has that curve in the front, I'm still going to start off by just creating an overall bounding box of the front view. So I'll kind of just start off with some guides and I'll just make a box of my overall length, which is five. And an overall height, which is gonna be two. And that's because we can see from that little center point mark, that little green mark, that that curve, that largest curve, is centered right on that bottom edge. And that the largest curve has a radius of two, which means that from edge to the very top point of that curve is two. So then I'll measure up two, make a little mark just to kind of create a little box to fit my shape in. Even though pretty much all of this upper line is gonna get erased as a guide, I just always find it very helpful to use that subtractive method of just make a bounding box and then carve your piece out of it. So now I'm gonna mark where the center of this line is. So if the whole line is five, that means the center is at two and a half. I did Again, eyeball that pretty good. Um, maybe you'll find too that you're getting pretty good at eyeballing measurements anyway. But it's always good to check. Even though I eyeballed where the center was, I just want to check it with my ruler. It doesn't take time really to do it. And it's better to check than to do something wrong. So now that I have that, I'm going to set my compass to have a radius of two. And to do that, I'm just going to take my compass, put it against my ruler, and just kind of measure out to where it's at two inches. Um, again, if there is a better way to set a compass, then I surely do not know it. 
However, I don't find this way to be too difficult. So I'm just laying that there and just saying, okay, it's at two. And then I'm gonna stick the pointy side in that center. And I'm just gonna make a curve. I'm not gonna go all the way with it because I know that that end result, part of this is gonna get cut off. And then we also have that smaller curve, which has a radius of one and a quarter. And so let me adjust to one and a quarter. And it has that same center point. So I'm gonna just start in that same center point. Did I set that right? It seems like this is really, oh, I guess it is that thick. Okay, haven't made this one before. So this is my first time drawing it with you guys. And I'm just gonna make another little curve. And then for these flat pieces, I'll just make a measurement up of three quarters of an inch. And I'll just bring it to meet on either of those sides. So whoops, I actually need to bring that down a little bit further for my curve. So good thing I didn't touch my compass because I needed to bring that compass curve down a little bit more. And now I'm going to go through and erase my guides. And get ready to project back. So I am going to have curves in what I project back, but they're still going to be um, semicircles. Um, instead of like ellipses like we have in isometrics because the curves are going to be on the back face and the back is going to have the same lines as the front face. So I said we're going to do a cabinet oblique, which means we're going to go back half depth. And so let me just project back. I'm going to project back from the center point because then that's going to help me find where the center of these curves are going to sit. Project back, project back, and also from this little curve here too, project back. So now I'm going to go back half the depth. So if it has an overall depth of two, that means I'm gonna go back just one inch and I'm just gonna measure one. Up. over and on this line too I'll measure up one and then on this line as well from that center point I'll measure up one because that's going to tell me where my new center point is and I'll add in my curves so I'm just going to double check that this didn't get accidentally changed or adjusted and it didn't it still set at one and a quarter so that means I can just go add in this little curve right here. For where that back edge would be sitting. And then I'll adjust it to back to two for a radius of two. And using that same center point, I'm just going to kind of line it up with where that back edge is. But to give myself less to erase, I'm not going to do it until it's like outside of that circle. If that makes sense. So without trying to get my hands in the way of the camera, I'm just starting it on that circle's edge because I know that that's where it's going to start anyway. And let's erase my guide work. 
Now another helpful thing you can do with 3D drawings that I mentioned in the presentation are things related to shading. So you can shade different parts of your drawings to help kind of show some of the different faces and how they differ. Personally, I don't like to shade my drawings. I like to just leave them as just plain line work. I'm just going through and darkening some of it. Just to help, because my guidelines were not coming up. But here we have a cabinet oblique done of this shape. So again, the what makes it cavalier versus cabinet is not the angle it's done at. So these are both done at 45 degrees. It's just this one we went back the full depth versus this one we went back half the depth. This is a cabinet and this is a cabinet, but it's done with a different angle. So this is 30 degrees versus 45. Last step would be to get rid of more of our ugly guides that we didn't erase for some reason. And then you guessed it to fill in our title block. So I believe this one again is called bearing cap. But if it's not, please don't write bearing cap. Write whatever its actual title is. Then put your name in the next box. And again, make sure you're writing your actual name. The date. The scale we drew it at, which we did this one as one to one. And then how many are in this drawing set. So this is drawing one of one. 